Hello everybody, um, I was looking at how to clean up all the waters on our planet um, and actually I was looking at this for quite some time uh, but there still is a lot of work and really interesting stuff to do. I wanted to do the actual uh, Caribbean and Oceania area in detail on video um, so that hopefully uh, people can work together on this. And I wanted to say thanks so much for all the people that have worked on cleaning the water. Um, I'm trying to have a little bit of hot tea as I work on this right now, um, but super awesome uh, work uh, to get involved in. Um, and, you know, I've had a water filter at my house before uh, and it has been really great. Um, Anyway, so let's get started. So basically, we're going to look at the Caribbean here and all of Southeast Asia. As you can see, uh, most of the rivers are actually on the major, uh, for example, the Amazon River is the uh, biggest river by far, maybe three times larger than any other river in terms of the amount of water. Uh, and then there's also the Congo River here. There's the Mississippi River. You can see um, there's actually quite a number of rivers that are not shown that actually head north up into Russia and into the Arctic. Um, and then there's also the Yangtze River and the Pearl River and the Ganges River and a number of different rivers in Europe that are super important. But actually what's going to be super interesting here... Okay, my friend just called me up and that was great. Uh, but really what I want to emphasize is that all these rivers start as small rivers. And actually even though we're going to be looking at really tiny rivers that pretty much don't even show up on this map... They're actually extremely important. Uh, most of the water pollution on the planet is actually from uh, like Philippines, uh, India, uh, and actually Southeast Asia. So actually this region, uh, even though there's not a lot of rivers there, there's a lot of just uh, you know sewage being dumped into here and so on. So let's zoom in and see what's going on. It might take a little while to load here, um, but I'm gonna start, let's start in, in Southeast Asia because uh, basically, this is really important here. So, so I just turned on the satellite map uh, so you can kind of see uh, what's going on here a little bit. Uh, I'll turn it back to the regular map in a second here so you can also see. But basically, uh, it helps to use both. Uh, so basically, what are we looking for? Um, so essentially, what's going on here is most of the major cities on our planet, for example, Jakarta down here, uh, is actually at the end of a river, uh, and it's actually on the ocean front. So for example, Hong Kong, Shanghai, New York City, Boston, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, all these cities that you can, the, a lot of the major cities are actually right on the ocean at the end of the river. So, uh, that problem is actually dumping directly into the ocean and that is very important but what i really want to look at is more of the midpoint and the start so there's basically three sections of the river there's the start of the river the middle river and the end of the river but we want to look at primarily the starts of the rivers and the middle points of the river and particularly in oceana area so this is an extremely important conversation so it's really hard for me to explain how important this conversation is uh this conversation could basically save the wildlife of our entire planet and ocean so if we can do this in a good way we can really help out a lot um so there's a couple ways to look at this uh question um now the biodiversity map is also very important um and basically this is the most biodiverse place on the planet so the real problem is actually in Sumatra and Malaysia and of course in Jakarta, but the situation is so, like as you can see, uh, if I turn off the population map, you can see here that it's basically fully populated the entire island, it all changes color, you can't even see any green there. So if I change this map, I think to here you can see it even more clearly. Uh, but I'll try to turn this off so you can see that's the island and that's the population. So basically, uh, basically Sumatra is a huge question. And actually, this island 
is starting to become very farmed to uh, Borneo. And you can see here as well in Sulawesi. Now, this island here, uh, I almost don't even like to talk about it, Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. Actually, the problem is actually on the Indonesian side and the Papua New Guinea side, but primarily we're starting to see a lot of problems there. So basically it would be really awesome to keep an entire island the size of Papua New Guinea 100% wildlife island uh, and even start to uh, reforest uh, islands like Sumatra. Um, now you can see there's this island is almost fully populated, but there's a lot of little islands along the coast here as well as here. So basically uh, the ocean uh, has a lot of biodiversity. Uh, okay, so here basically is one way to look at this right so <clears throat> you can see that there's a lot of, of these starts of the rivers here that I put in black and then I put kind of a midpoint in the blue and the red <clears throat> and then here you can see uh, the population uh, details right so you can start to see the certain areas actually have very important uh, water points, right? So like particularly in here, let me highlight that in yellow. So right around this guy. Okay, so here you can kind of see uh, some of those details. So basically here's the original rivers and then here's the population on top of that, right? <clears throat> Okay, so I've been also looking at the wildlife diversity map and actually this whole peninsula on Malaysia is extremely important um, because of both population and also because of Thailand and all the food here. So actually this bay has become so polluted uh, primarily because of Thailand. Uh, there's actually not very much fishing or even no fishing going on here. All the fishing has basically moved out to Vietnam out from this bay which maybe a hundred years ago or even less uh you know and actually there should there should be uh, absolutely no fishing so and there can't be fishing now because the water is so polluted so this is one of the most polluted uh bays in the world uh perhaps uh right up here as well um <clears throat> in bangladesh it's extremely polluted uh, every every major uh, Delta has been really, really polluted out many hundreds of miles. On the satellite imagery, you can usually see uh, that. Let me show you really quick. So here's a quick shot of India. You can see that this is, goes on for essentially a thousand miles of pollution. So these are clouds and this is all pollution. And you can see it actually heads out into the ocean quite a bit. And here you can also see that uh, as well. Now, <clears throat> this... Uh, uh, doesn't really show the extent of you can kind of see in Mumbai here uh, but actually the air pollution is extreme so and also in China uh, they have a cloud coverage here but sometimes it's all the essentially almost all of China is a cloud of smoke uh, on some days so here you can see almost all of India is uh, and this was just yesterday so I'm gonna switch up here and look at mainland Bangkok um, and Thailand as well as down here, uh, basically in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh, and this river here uh, that heads here because this, um, you know, basically the problem, although all the way down to Singapore, um, it's, you know, these are smaller rivers, they're actually even more important because there's a lot of little animals. All kinds of animals that live there um, in here it's almost been completely populated so uh, we want to look at this as well because there's actually a lot of food here for humans um, and details that we probably should definitely understand I'll zoom out just a little bit more so we can see this uh, before One second. So I'm gonna to try to use the greatest possible map here. Um, now you're seeing several things in this map, right? You see Bangladesh here, you see Vietnam, Hanoi, you see Myanmar here, you also see Vietnam, and then really importantly, you see Hong Kong and Taiwan. 
um, and then also the Philippines. So in this one map right here, we have a lot of major cities um, and as well as going into the Philippines, right? So there's just so much work here in looking at all this, but we're gonna try to take a look at it really carefully here. Now right here, you're seeing the farming map. So actually it's slightly different uh, than just the population map, right? So it's not only population, it's also farmland, right? So you can see uh, if we were to change this, there's basically mountains. So it's basically been almost entirely farmed out. Um, except for the mountain range and high up in the hills. So basically when we're starting to look at the rivers here, there's actually a huge amount of rivers that really matter uh, up in here. And actually the perimeter, the new towns are the ones that actually... So basically what's happening is that people are moving further and further out uh, here and then they're polluting the rivers and then those rivers eventually get into bigger towns and all that. So the problem actually needs to be cleaned up at the start of the river, right? So that's why all these little details out here really matter a lot. Um, and you can see here from the food map, uh, it's a little bit different. Okay, so again, what I wanted to emphasize here is we have the water uh, lines here. So each one of these are kind of plates where all the water collects uh, in a certain region. This is due to a mountain range or a hill or anything. And then there's kind of these fault or these junctions here uh, where each of the plates so this water plate drains differently uh, than this water plate right and in those areas is essentially either the top of a mountain um, or uh, a major change uh, in the geography or geology right so basically the major cities in those regions like right here there's this city right there right and then there's a couple cities right around the river here right those are very important for the water because there's actually the animals primarily stay on one side of these lines or the other right so a certain type of habitat is going to be on this side of this line another type of habitat is going to be on that type of line and then all along the top of the peak is also going to be another habitat right so we have this little spot right in here um, and there's just so many of them um, to find so uh, basically yeah so uh, there's a lot of little details here um, and you can see that fault line comes in through here and there's probably these guys right in here and you can see that's heading down into Cambodia and so on, right? So this actually is one continuous. So the top of the mountain range in Vietnam is all throughout here and then that comes down through there. So actually every single one of these guys and then you can see particularly right in here, right? And then there's actually on either side of these lines back up into here right in this region you're probably gonna have it this is not really yellow but let's say it's a different color but um, <clears throat> let me just get a purple in here so you can see so basically this guy right in here um, and that's a two junction one whereas here there's three of them coming in and you can kind of see on either side of that uh, it's going to be very important as the start of the water. So basically the water is going to drain one side this way and one side the other way. So this is, again is going to be a farming map. I'm just going to circle these here so you can see the major junctions right in here. Um, and then there's actually a bunch of them all coming together all the way across this. So you have these different pathways kind of, let me, there's one coming down through here through here, through here, and then even through here, right? And so actually the middle points along these are gonna be very important um, for these farms. Let me get that green. So essentially the swamps, what happened here is that the mountains are on the side of these plains here and then the swamp is basically down through here. Um, uh, so before we look at the Philippines and basically some of my friends are pounding on the door right now, um, which is kind of odd, but basically you can see here these major regions. Um, I'd like to really get some other people involved in looking at this as well. So uh, please try to take a look at these areas and uh, take a look at the details. It looks like there's actually another city right in here that probably should be 
very carefully looked at. So, uh, okay, so I just want to finish up this Philippines details, right? So, there's a, <laughs> it's, it's going to be impossible to finish these details. So, basically, you can see on the main map, which is... I think you need to just turn off your... Okay, so hi, everybody. My brother is here. Um, he helped me work on the Antarctica looks like a brain kind of spiritually even though he didn't directly do the research he helped with the neuroscience of it so I just want to look at the main map here really quick so basically what we've been talking about is the Philippines right and there was a question of how this is potentially linked to the North Pole and South Pole, right? And that is a whole huge discussion. Okay, so sorry about that. So, but yeah, so basically the main question is how to link this with the South Pole and North Pole. And I've been trying to look at that for a while. We might have to completely change the conversation here since my brother is in the room. And we'll try to do that uh, even though it was completely not related to this. So... We're zooming out here on the Philippines, but uh, we did we did come up with this idea that there was a neurological bridge uh, in Palau, and I think we talked about that. I don't know, you remember that, Bryn? We talked about that whole thing. So this whole diamond shape thing is actually in part on the Philippines here, and if you look at the climate map, which is basically, sorry, this is really slow here because we're looking at a lot of information but the main question here is how is this all connected to antarctica in the philippines and actually uh, there's like an invisible side here and a visible side on this side right so we basically know that this pathway is a lot more spiritual than this side and that you know has really uh I don't know, this is really slow here, but I'm gonna try to change this map a little bit. Uh, I like it being, what's going on here, sorry, but, uh, but basically the climate, you can see here now that this actually all goes down to the South Pole. And if clearly the earth is alive, right? And if this is Antarctica here, let me, man, this is really slow for some reason. I'm going to have to remove some things here. But uh, but essentially, this Philippine path, you know, we basically have all this, we have this Tasmania stuff going on here, and then way up here is the Philippines, right? And there is some kind of triangular structure here. And if we're talking about clean water, uh, you know, the perspective of that, the half of it is actually deep in the ocean, right? And then the other half is on the Philippine side and then Taiwan and up to Japan. And actually Japan Japan kind of like re restabilizes that whole volcanic and earthquake path. Right. You can see here and and it goes